morning. Welcome to worship. We're grateful to have you here. We're going to begin with a song. We got Marissa helping us out, leading. You ready? Yep. Are you all ready? Oh, man. All right, I'll invite you to stand as you're able. Let's, con let's begin our worship. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Here we go. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Because he hung up on that cross. And he rose up from that grave, my God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There we go. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. Amen. What a joy it is to worship our God together. And we're here to, to hear a word from that God. And I want to share, start with this scripture from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and to find vengeance for those who love God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those in Zion, to give a garland instead of ashes, an oil of gladness instead of mourning. That is what we are here to, to witness yet again today, this God who was always with us, and we are so glad that you are a part of it. You may be seated. 
Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mike. As we continue in our worship, we have a few announcements, a few things happening in the church, and, and a few things we're changing up just a little bit. So I need to ask you all a big old favor. When I say a fancy word or something a little bit different, could you just humor me? Okay, you may not feel this way, but I just want you to humor me. Could you say, ooh, or ah, okay? All right, it's coming. I'll, I'll cue you. You'll know when it's happening, but just, just humor me. La not yet, not yet. You'll know. First, I want to welcome you all to worship. As always, um, we're so grateful to have you here. If you are new with us, if you're joining us for the first time, maybe that's you are watching online for the first time, that's great. Uh, we want to invite you to text WELCOME to 308-730-4040. Proud dad moment. Well, kind of a proud dad moment. We were reviewing phone numbers the other night, and one of the kids recited that number, 308-730-4040, and it was like, proof, Jesus, somebody listens to the announcements. I was so grateful. It was great. Um, but for, for those of you that are, are new joining us, we're also changing something up a little bit. And this is for all of us here at the church. One of our values and one of our missions is feeding the hungry. And that's something that we do, we practice. In fact, this week we are going to be serving at The Connection. And you all know that you can just show up to serve at about 5.30. It's great. You can contact Sue if you want more details. Um, get, but plug in with our missions team and they do it. Um, but one of the things we were thinking of when we were thinking about guests and having them fill out the Connect card that's in their pew or, or if, they want, if they're going to text this in sharing their information, sometimes churches will do like the, hey, we're going to give you the welcome package with the free t-shirt that you never wear that doesn't fit quite right or, or, uh, or we're going to give you a mug and how many of us uh, like have too many mugs as is, right? Um, so we were thinking, how do we lift up our value but also honor somebody sharing their information with us? And that's when we came around to the idea, we know of a few other churches who do this as well, that instead of giving them a gift, giving our guests a gift, um, we're actually going to make a $5 donation to Feeding the Hungry, which would be one of our mission, our local food pantries, in their name. Just to say, hey, we believe so much in this that we're going to do a little bit extra and as our gift to you, we want to make you a part of that mission. And so um, we're really excited to try this out. I know that sounds just a little bit different, and, and I know how many times my grandma said, hey, we made a, a donation in your name for a Christmas present, the letdown. It was like, oh, in my name, I wanted the five bucks. No, that's okay. Um, I think our guests will get it. It lifts up our mission. It lifts up our value. And, and it's a great way to just continue to do what we've been called to do. So that's a lot for the welcome slide. We're going to be going over that for the next few weeks. But um, as a reminder, this is another encouragement for those who are new to, to sign in. And you all are the welcome team, okay? Not just the folks holding the door open, but you all are that welcome team. So go on ahead and invite and encourage whenever you see somebody new. Okay, there's that. Another great way to communicate, to connect with the church is through prayers. We believe in the power of prayer, so if we can serve you in that way, let us know. A couple other quick announcements. Trunk or Treat is coming up really quick. All right, I mentioned that ooh and ah thing. We got it working this week. The kiosk in the back. Yeah, isn't that fancy? All right, I know kiosks have been around for like decades and, and digital ones and that kind of thing. So First Church is a little late to the game getting there. But um, it's our Next Steps page on our new website. We have a new website that's launched. It's functional. And when you go to the website for the first time, it's going to be very much a front door experience. And you know this. When you walk, into somebody, walk up to somebody's house... Um, most of us, we like to hang a wreath or make sure the front of the house looks nice. It's not like the kitchen where I've got a stack of dirty dishes and, and all the chores and things to do, right? Um, and that's the way we've set up our website. Just like a house, we want the front door, the landing page, to be like that welcome page. Not that our kitchen sink is a mess, but for those of us that are in the church and want to sign up for things, we need to know to navigate to what we're calling the next steps page. And on that page will be Trunk or Treat sign up um, if you'd like to do that. And that's what's on the kiosk. Again, give me a little. 
Yeah, see, that's nice. So it's there. It'll follow up um, there. But there's also, the, there's also a chance to connect if you're a guest, a first-time guest. Um, there's other opportunities. I think there's information about missions. And we're going to make sure that that page is updated with the most relevant ways to respond to the message. So bookmark that Next Steps page on your phone. Um, you can pull it out any time. But that's also what that kiosk is in the back. So thank you for humoring me. I know it's not as impressive as it, as it sounds. I know. It's OK. Um, but we are looking for lots and lots of trunks. It's October now, so folks, we got to get with it. We want 35 plus trunks and a couple truckloads of candy. So um, if you can bring candy, great. If you can sign up to help in another way, we'd love it. Um, and as always, if, if you're not into the kiosk, just ask one of the staff. We'll help you out as best we can there. Okay, that's a lot for announcements. Next weekend is, is Celebration Sunday, so we're really excited about that. Pastor Mike, would you tell us more? One of the ways we've been able to respond recently is our Warming Our Hearts campaign, our capital campaign for this year. Um, about a month ago, we made the announcement of where we were as we started the public campaign. And so just a few weeks ago, we announced that we had $510,510. And put that first slide up. 22 households had given 68% of our funds. But we promised you we'd give an update today as well, and so I'm excited to share the new numbers with you today. The next slide is $653,000, 87% of the way there. We thank you so much. Now, I was really excited when 510, 510 came up, and I decided God must be saying something, but I have no idea what that's supposed to reference. Um, I'm just going to take the joy of that moment. It, it is amazing what our church family has been able to do. Now, when we started this process, we believed there was 90 to 100 families that we've been praying for that would give to part of this campaign. And so if you haven't had a chance, we'd love for you to still do that. You can fill out one of the cards we mailed. You can also fill it out on that Next Steps page as well. Here's the reality. If, if we have another 50 families that give $3,000 each or an average of $3,000, we'll hit that goal. We'll beat that goal. And if we go over the $750,000, which would be amazing, uh, we've got projects that we had to say no to this year because we didn't think we'd have the funding for it. So know that your generosity is incredibly important. Now, some of those gifts are $1,000, and that's an amazing gift. One of the gifts that, that got us to this point was a $75,000 gift. Wherever you fall, it is what we do together that may, matters and how God uses us all to make a difference. So we continue to, to ask for you to pray about that and decide how you might be involved as well. And most of all, remember, uh, these gifts are above and beyond our regular giving because we are still doing our stewardship campaign. We're still striving to do this incredible ministry uh, of touching the next generation of Christ followers. So thank you all for that. I think that's enough of announcements. It's exciting, but we are here to worship God. I invite you to stand as we worship today. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise, let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise, let, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, Let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. 
Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Let it rise. Come on. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall for fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 oh we praise you. seated. I'll invite our children forward for our children's moment. Well, good morning. Are you guys awake? Yeah. Well, good morning. I don't know if they're awake or not. So when you guys come up for children's time, what do you usually get? Suckers. Suckers? Are you sure? Yeah. So, so why do you get a sucker? To give them away, all right. So, so did you guys do something really awesome to get a sucker? Yeah. Did you pay for the sucker? No. No? Well, then why did we give you suckers? To eat them. To eat them. Oh. Well, sometimes we think that, that when we get good stuff, it must be because we did something right. Like, we did something really cool, and so we got a prize. Or we earned the money to pay for it, and so that's why we got it. But one of the things we practice in worship, one of the things we practice in church, is that God gives us grace. Now, grace means that we didn't do anything special. It just means that God gave it to us. Not because we earned it, but because he loves us that much. So one of the things we do every week is we try to give you guys suckers and have you share that grace as well. Today in our sermon, we're going to be talking about gratitude. Do your mom and dad ever tell you that you're supposed to say what when somebody gives you something? Say it loud. Thank you. Oh, you're right. You're supposed to say thank you when somebody gives you something. And that's one of the ways that we show gratitude. But that's not just for kids. That's not just when we get something. We are supposed to say thank you to God all the time. Because God is always doing great things for us. And so this week, as I, you guys get your suckers and get to give them away, I want you guys to remember how you can show gratitude. Not because we earned it. Not because... We're supposed to have it, but because God loves us that much, all right? Okay, would you pray with me? Can you guys fold your hands and repeat after me? Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for always sharing your love. Help us always to say thank you 
for all the good things you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. You guys did great. Why don't you come up and grab three, one for you, and two to give to somebody else. As we continue in our worship, we take a moment to recognize where God is at work in our lives and in our ministries. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll brag just a little bit. I got to go see one of my favorite groups, uh, bands or Christian band, Elevation Worship, this last week. And was really excited. And their music was amazing. The message was powerful. Um, and just really an incredible experience. And I, I just invite you, sometimes it's okay to get out and have a little fun in the name of being a Christian too, you know? Like, um, I've seen other groups and different things. But even though there was a message, even though there was music, and in fact, a lot of the music we use here in worship, um, my wife and I both, as we left, which was like 11 o'clock Denver time, midnight, I, that's so late for me anymore. I'm, I'm turning into an old guy, I guess. I don't know. Um, I can't handle midnight anymore. Um, but anyway, as we, were, as we were going out, we both made the comment like, that was so good. But like, it felt like something was missing. It felt like something, something just a little bit different was missing. And, and yes, we knew each other, but uh, with our closest 5,000 friends that we were worshiping with, we just felt a little bit of a miss. We didn't feel the connection that we feel at church. You know, We sang all the songs, but then we, we didn't see each other. And that longing reminded me, you know, there was a moment this last week where I saw church, and yet there was no message, there was no music, um, in fact, all of the typical things we see on a Sunday, there, there really wasn't much of. But when I left that room, it felt a lot like church. And do you know where it was, where, what it was? It was on Wednesday, late morning into the noon hour, our Spires crew. We have about a dozen folks who get together every month to put our newsletter together that, um, that they just sit and chill and, they, and the, it's, it's tape and, and paper and collating and, and all sorts of things. And, and yet... In the midst of their conversation, in the midst of their connection, there's this thing that we, a real churchy word that we use, communion. There was conversation. There was a real, genuine connection. And I love stopping by to see the Spires crew because afterward, I'm always like, yeah, we've got a really good church. We've got, and it just, left, it just left me grateful. And it's just one of those reminders that as much as, as much as church is about music and giving and all the other things, it's so much more about this genuine connection that the Holy Spirit facilitates. Now, I know at the concert, there were other folks who got to experience that. But for me, I want you all to know and I want you all to hear how special you are and the difference you make in my worship. It really does fill my heart with gratitude. And so as we continue and as we talk about this word gratitude, um, two things. Um, well, Pastor Mike's going to have a couple more things later, but I'll, I'm going to share two things. First, we always worship, we always give out of a sense of gratitude, and that's really important. And so if you feel so led to give, again, you can use the kiosk in the back. But I know that's not everybody's jam. That's okay. If it is easier to use the offering plate, if it's easier to mail a check, whatever, whatever you like to do, please do that. Because, again, it's about the heart of gratitude. It's not about the way we give, okay? Um, so first, we give out of a sense of gratitude. And second, we give out of a sense of communion because God is doing a great work in this church. And one of the ways that we're going to express that today as well, and this is, just, this is just another thing, I know there's a lot going on, but this may resonate with you. We join Methodists all around the globe today in celebrating what we know as World Communion Sunday. Now at this service, we receive communion every week. It's something that we love and get to do, um, but we're going to join a lot of other churches all over the place in participating. And so there is a mission offering that goes along with that. Um, you're welcome to look up more information, obviously, um, and then there is a there is an envelope in the back to designate that. But it's just another sign that God is bringing us together in so many different ways. And for that, we have another reason to be grateful. So lots and lots going on in the church. Um, thank you for your generosity. We're going to continue. We've got another song. This one's a little newer still. Um, we, we, we sang it a couple of weeks ago. So if you don't know it, just clap along and, and humor me just a little bit. But um, it is a good one. So let's stand. Let's continue in our worship.
There is revival right here and now. There is a fresh wind, and I can hear the sound. Something truly wonderful is happening. There is a difference inside of me, more than a feeling. This is a prophecy, something really powerful is happening when darkness bow down to the day mountains get up out my way I'm breaking out of yesterday I got a new thing coming tell this giant in my face you're not greater than my faith best believe me when I say I got a new thing coming. I got a new thing coming. I got a new thing coming. There's an anointing to destroy the yoke. So tell every stronghold, you gotta let me go. Something really powerful is happening. shadows into the overflow something really powerful is happening sing it out darkness darkness bow down to the day mountains get up out my way breaking out of yesterday I got a new thing coming I got a new thing coming. I got a new thing coming. I got a new thing coming. I can see a cloud heavy with rain, and it looks like salvation is headed our way. I can hear a sound, the abundance of rain. It sounds like freedom, and it's headed our way. I can hear a sound, the abundance of rain. It sounds like provision, it's headed our way. Darkness bow down to the day, mountains get about my way. Breaking out of yesterday, I got a new thing coming. So tell this giant in my face, you're not greater than my faith. Best believe me when I say, I got a new thing coming. I got a new thing coming. I got a new thing coming. Heavy with rain. And it looks like joy is headed our way. Cause I can see a cloud and it's heavy with rain. And it looks like Jesus and he's headed our way. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from first. Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 15 through 25. Listen to the word of God. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and body and soul be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will not 
And he will do this. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Please and thank you. It is one of the first things we teach our kids. We don't often think about it in those terms, but teaching gratitude is one of the most natural responses we have as parents, as, as teachers, as mentors. Think about it when a parent drops a kid off to stay at a friend's house. There's always this checklist, right? Now, remember to be nice, listen to what Jimmy's mom has to say, pick up after yourself, and remember to say please and thank you. Maybe your list was a little different, but I'm guessing please and thank you is on there. The, the thing is, kids, they, they get to this point like mine did, where they just start to roll their eyes like, oh, I, I knew that already. I think every, every child out there gets to a point where they just start to hear their parents like we heard parents on the Charlie Brown's cartoon, right? Wah, 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 wah. We, we strive to teach kids the, the importance of gratitude. And yet as adults, I know there are times we miss it ourselves. Like, I love getting thank you cards in the mail, but I'll confess I'm not always as good about sending them. Now, gratitude, it, it's about more than just having good manners. Gratitude is one of those core pieces that makes us Christ followers. As I mentioned, next week we'll, we'll be wrapping up this series called Warming Our Hearts and this fall stewardship campaign we've been working on. In the midst of all of this, as we talk about how the Holy Spirit works in our lives and our hearts, we recognize that gratitude is a piece of that. In this church, we, we talk about giving out of that sense of gratitude all the time. And, and so it was logical that one of the messages we'd give is how gratitude grows. <laughs> I know it's not an earth-shattering idea. I know it's not some cutting-edge philosophy you've never heard. I think sometimes, whether we admit it or not, churches start to hear their pastors a lot like that Charlie Brown voice as well, right? I've heard it all before. But I got to wondering, is, is that how people responded to today's scripture when it was first shared? When the Thessalonians received this letter, did, did they roll their eyes like, oh, we've heard it all before, or did they read this letter differently? See, many scholars believe that 1 Thessalonians may have been the very first letter that Paul ever wrote. For us, the, the written word is so common that, that we almost forget the significance of it. And yet for the for the early church, these written words were so powerful. We forget that, that Paul's letters, they were actually written even before the Gospels. And so if this truly was Paul's very first letter, then this is Christianity's first written word. If you're a romantic, think about the first note you ever got from your husband or wife. <laughs> Maybe it's something that, that you cherish, that you read over and over again. <laughs> Maybe you're like my wife, and you have a box where you keep all of those little notes and memories. See, for the Thessalonians, I, I think that's the way they approach this scripture. Not as rolling your eyes, I've heard it all before, but as this incredible message from God. And I think... And that's how we're meant to approach it as well. I mean, if we really start to look at these words, we can see how Paul strived to make them memorable and powerful. I mean, look at verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all 
circumstances. Gratitude is at the core of this text. And and Paul's takeaway was that, that gratitude isn't based on our situation. Gratitude is finding the good in anything. I mean, remember half of the letters that Paul wrote, he wrote from a prison cell. And yet every message was recognizing the goodness of God. Now, I know we all have seasons in life where it is harder to practice gratitude. But I think we we get the overall concept. And yet, there's a line in today's scripture that, that always stops me, that always grabs my attention. Verse 19 says, do not quench the spirit. Have you ever considered that before? I mean, if gratitude is something that we can grow, then gratitude is also something we can sabotage. I don't think we try to. I think it just happens. And yet, today I want to talk about two attitudes that that I think can derail our gratitude. I know pastors are supposed to have a three-point sermon, right? But we'll just do two today. Everybody forgive me for that, yeah? Micah thinks we don't ever have points as pastors, but we do. The the reality, though, is these can derail where we're at. So gratitude's first enemy is envy. Now, most of us hear that word envy and think it doesn't apply to us. We don't see ourselves as being envious. And yet it's a human reality that goes back to Cain and Abel, or or maybe even Adam and Eve, wanting something we don't have. The thing is, envy is often subtle and sneaky. One minute we were celebrating with someone about their relationship or their talent or their Husker tickets, right? And, And then... All of a sudden, it shifts from I'm glad for them to I wish I had that. I don't mean to burst anyone's bubble, but pastors struggle with envy too. Paul didn't want the early church to to miss out on this gift of gratitude. And yet he recognized that, that envy... It's something that can get in the way. Like the letter he wrote to the Galatians, Galatians 5.26, he says, Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. We'd love to say as Christians that's, that's not really applicable to us. We don't have that problem. But Paul wrote that because it was. Because it still is. Envy gets us nowhere. I mean, we try to redeem it. We say, well, well, it motivates me to try harder. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, I, I don't believe that you can be envious and grateful at the same time. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with striving for something better. Until it becomes Envy. And whether we intend to or not, there's something in our human nature that causes us to compare. It's the classic keeping up with the Joneses idea. You know, I I didn't realize it, but that phrase, keeping up with the Joneses, it actually came from a comic strip that was published in 1913. But it stuck. Because it's something we all can relate to. Maybe it doesn't have to be that way. There's a a song that came out just a a few years ago called I Want to Go Back by an author named David Dunn. I don't think he's related at all, right? No? All right. But in this song, uh, David Dunn talks about Wanting to go back to the way things were when you were a kid. That, that simpler piece of life. 
And there's one line that always gets to me. He says, when I was a kid, I didn't care to keep up with the Joneses. I was just happy that they lived next door. Kids. Kids sometimes get it in a way we don't as adults. That is the sense of gratitude that Paul was challenging us towards. When our heart is focused on on envy or what we don't have, then we quench the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've never considered yourself to be an envious person, and, and maybe you don't think that word applies to you, but if we are constantly focused on what we don't have, then we quench the Spirit. If you feel like you're missing some gratitude in your life, Envy might be the culprit. Or it could be the the second side of it. Gratitude's second enemy is entitlement. I know it's another one of those words that we're certain does not apply to us, right? I have never asked someone if they were entitled and had them say yes. But I have asked other people if someone's entitled and got a yes, right? It's something we don't see in ourselves, especially in the subtlest forms. Now, as far as I can tell, the Bible never uses the word entitlement. I don't think there are any words in in the Hebrew or the Greek language that translate into English as entitled. But the word pride, it comes up a lot in Scripture. Maybe one of the best known comes from Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. I remember, I remember being in a men's Bible study many years ago. I, I was in my early 30s, and, and one of the other gentlemen was in his 60s. And, and he said he always struggled with the Bible's push against pride. He says, my dad always told me growing up that you should take pride in your work. The Bible tells me I shouldn't. And for the next 20 minutes, we we shared with one another how, how maybe there's a difference. Maybe there is a difference between taking pride in what God has allowed us to do and taking pride in us. It's been 15 years ago I still remember that gentleman starting to cry because maybe it was okay to be proud of what his, God, what his dad had taught him and still follow Christ. The thing is, we confuse the two. Entitlement says, I deserve this or, or I earned this. Gratitude says, I'm thankful for this. And maybe, maybe I can bless someone else because of it as well. They sound similar, but, but those two perspectives are miles apart. You know, the Simpsons is one of the longest-running animated series of all times. And I admit, I've I've never really gotten into the show, but it does have a huge following. In 1990, during season two, there was an episode where Bart, the the little boy, asks if he can say grace at Thanksgiving. And his prayer was this. He says, dear God, we paid for all of this ourselves, so I guess thanks for nothing. As you can imagine... (laughs) That didn't settle well with a lot of Christians. And one of the people who responded to that episode was was a pastor and author named Lee Strobel. I I love Lee Strobel's writing. He's most known for his books, A Case for a Creator and A Case for Christ. And, And I think I'm attracted to his writing because he's a former journalist just like me. But not long after that episode came out, he 
had a sermon titled, What Jesus Would Say to Bart Simpson. <laughs> and then he made a series, What Jesus Would Say to Bill Clinton and Sinead O'Connor. And in 1994, he actually had a book he put together with all of these, What Jesus Would Say. I think what was so fascinating to me, though, is, is Strobel's take was maybe different than we'd expect. He says, the world is up in arms because of what Bart Simpson said. But the reality is our culture has lived it for a long time. He was just the first to say it. Sometimes as a culture, we... We get so focused on what we have and, and think we're entitled to it. We look at the successes in our world and, and miss that, that maybe we've been blessed right out of a need for God. That's never what God intended. I think Paul got that, right? He, he lived a life where he was entitled for a long time. Remember, before he was converted to Christianity, he, he was among the best and the brightest in the Jewish world. He was so certain of his goodness and righteousness that he persecuted the church and made a name for himself doing it. And then, then he met Jesus. He had an encounter with the living God, and he traded it all for a life of gratitude. The irony is, from the world's perspective, it was when he made that decision that everything went wrong. It was then that he began to be the persecuted. It was, it was then that he started to be beaten. It was then that he found himself in prison, and Paul constantly said, I'm so happy, so thankful because of what Christ has done. And don't mishear me. I, I'm not suggesting that our role as Christians is that we're supposed to suffer and be happy about it. But when we discover gratitude is about more than our circumstances, that's when everything changes. I'm guessing we all know those people who, who just have this attitude of gratitude, right? People who always seem to see the best in things. One of the things I love about First Church is there, there are many people like that. But when we started to, to organize this series, one name came to mind for Micah and I. We wanted to show you the interview that Micah had with her. Well, hello, all my church friends. I am Mary Lynn Horst. I have been part of the Methodist Church since I was baptized when I was a baby. We actually started with an EUB church in the country when I grew up, and then it joined with the Methodist Church, and then we started there, and so I've been with them all my life. I don't want to tell you how many years. <laughs> I think, I think it started with my mother because um, if we ever came to her complaining, she would look at us and say, mm, I don't listen to complaints. I listen for ways that it can be improved or solved. And she always had such a positive outlook on things. And it was like, it's your choice. You can either be sad or you can choose to be happy and be thankful and think of something positive every day. In fact, as we said our prayers before our breakfast every single morning, she made us each say something that we were thankful for. I just think when we wake up and we start out and talk to God and just say, thank you for this day, and here are some blessings I have, it's just a so much more positive thinking about today. And sure, there may be some rough things that happen, but we always know that God's there. I think one of the things that first came to my mind there was um, the death of Brian. We saw him suffer, and as you knew Brian, that is not a way that he would want to live. 
And our prayer to God was to take him and relieve him from the pain. He was in a tremendous amount of pain. When we got the call from the, the care center that he had passed, um, it almost was a relief to Laura Lynn and I because we knew he was in a better place. We had seen him suffer. I feel for people that lose people unexpectedly because they don't have time to process all of this stuff in their heads. But we had processed that and we both were relieved and we thanked God because we knew that isn't how he wanted to live. Now we could have stayed sad about that. And you know, there's moments that you miss him and everything, but I think what I do is I try to thank God for the time that we had with him and the time we shared those funny things. And you know, Brian, there was always laughter. So that's how I chose to face it. And he was quite the guy. <laughs> well, I just think it's good to notice things and be thankful for them. And I remember driving to school every day. <clears throat> I would say a prayer. And then I always had the spot where I looked at the surroundings because nature is just something you can't give up. It's, it's just beautiful. I look out the window every morning when I read my devotions and see the green trees and the blue sky and now it's going to start being oh the colorful leaves as they start changing. So there's always things we can be thankful for. Always things. And you know I would have kids come in and would just start with complaints and this is bad and this is bad and I would just stop them and I would say okay we'll listen to that we'll talk about it but I want you to think about something that really makes you happy right now. And it may take them a while, but they would come up with, oh, when my grandma and grandpa come and visit, or those kind of things. But it changes their mindset to a more positive um, mindset. I think any time we say thanks to God, He's there with us, and he, He's the one that renews our soul. I thank God for my church. I thank God for you guys that are the staff members that lead the church. Laura Lynn was really, after Brian's death, was really wanting me to move back to Lincoln. She says, oh, you can move to Lincoln and all this. And I said, you know, Laura Lynn, first of all, I have my church. And they're very deep friends there. And I have my friends, but I also have the cancer center. And I said, they're amazing, and I don't want to go and start somewhere else. So I said, I will be just fine here. And I have been. It's been a wonderful place. I am Mary Lynn Horst, and Jesus is warming my heart. You know, gratitude, it changes everything. No, our, our problems don't disappear. Our struggles aren't gone. But our perspective shifts. Gratitude takes what we have and makes it always enough, more than enough. Gratitude, it, it turns the greed of this world into generosity. It takes the envy that the world seems to have and says, no, we, we can live in solidarity with one another. Gratitude, it takes this, this scarcity mindset and says, no, Oh, I worship a God of abundance, a God who is always doing more than we could ask or imagine. See, I think gratitude is, is one of the greatest virtues because it shepherds so many other virtues. You want to experience joy? You're not going to find it without gratitude. You want to experience balance in your life or, or harmony with those around you. You want to experience peace in this world. They all take root in the fertile soil of gratitude. So as a church, we're, we're called to constantly ask that question. How am I growing in that gratitude? What are the things that might be getting in the way of experiencing everything God has for me? The thing is, if, if you're waiting for your situation to change so you can be happy, 
that might be beyond your control. <laughs> but if we change our perspective, if, if we practice gratitude, then everything changes. Because we see what God can do in us. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And when we allow that Holy Spirit to warm our hearts, then we put gratitude into action. And when our gratitude, when our gratitude is lived out, there is nothing God can't do. Amen? Would you pray with me this morning? Gracious Father, we, we are thankful. And we confess, Lord, that there are times that, that we have let the distractions of the world get in the way. We confess, God, that, that there may be times that, that envy and entitlement have drowned out your goodness. Maybe we don't say those words. Maybe we don't think of it in those terms. But we confess, God, there are things that keep us from seeing your goodness. So we come here again today, God, to, to worship, to fellowship, to confess our struggles, and to take up this incredible gratitude you have offered to us. Lord, as we come to this time of communion, this, this recognition of what you have done and all that it has done for the world, help us, help us to see it as an opportunity to connect with the Holy Spirit inside us. Lord, we ask you once again to pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and, and on these gifts of bread and juice that you would make them be for us the body and blood of Christ in a way we, we may not understand, but we know that we can experience. We ask you, God, that, that you would make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to the whole world until Jesus comes again in that final victory, until we all feast at your heavenly banquet. We ask all of this, God, through the name of your Son, Jesus, who, who with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, we give all honor and glory to you, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Church, we are here because the incredible gifts Christ has given us. We are here to once again show our gratitude because on the night Jesus gave himself up for us. He took bread and, and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. After the meal, he, he took the cup and, and lifted it up to heaven and gave thanks to God, saying, this is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We come today celebrating in this sacrifice, showing a life of gratitude because God has so much more in store for us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mike. We now have the opportunity to participate in communion. And so there are two stations on either side. I invite you to come over the course of the next song and uh, take a piece of bread or the gluten-free option, dip it lightly in the cup and receive just the reminder of all we have to be grateful for. You're welcome to kneel, you're work, welcome to pray, you're welcome to stay in your seats. Um, probably the most important instruction is you're welcome. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church. All we ask is that you have that longing in your heart to experience that joy that we were talking about, the joy that comes through knowing the gratitude of Jesus. So with that, the table is set. Let us continue in our worship. Good 
Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. now as we go from this time and place of worship, let us go into the world living a life of gratitude. Not because everything's perfect, but because we worship a perfect God. Go and live a life of gratitude so others can see this perfect God as well. Thanks for worshiping today.